Here's my buddy Jack Doc. Thank you, Bap Bap. The whole point of the podcast is to take a look at Opie and Anthony, who are a duo of shock jocks out of New York, who at one point were one of the most popular names in radio, very successful, signing $100,000 deals and contracts, nationally syndicated, had their own show on XM Satellite Radio, and now one of them is doing hour-long Facebook live streams on his cell phone, and the other one is streaming out of his mansion. Well, not his mansion. He's streaming his out of a... cave. Well, he <laughs> was streaming out of his mansion. Now he has a separate studio, oh. so he's not broadcasting from his house. But he was at one point, very recently, streaming out of his mansion. How did we get here? How did these people who were very... I was going to say very young, then we're not. Very good <laughs> friends. Very uh, old young people. Yeah, young at heart, perhaps. Uh, very good friends and colleagues uh, turn into people who just now are in a vicious cycle of uploading videos to YouTube, shitting on each other, and reacting to the other one, and reacting, and back and forth, into infinity. How did we get here? How did they get there? That is point of the show. And in the last episode, we talked about what got Opie to his uh, late night show where he met Anthony. After Anthony was on the Opie show, the Nighttime Attitude and WBAB, he entered another contest. Because that's just what he does. He enters contests on popular radio shows trying to get noticed. And in this case, he appeared on the Howard Stern show. Hey, what are you, a professional uh, comedian or something? Uh, yeah, that's right, now. How are you been, buddy? You hey, know, I've been good to dead see you. for quite a while, you know. Yeah, you know, I was thinking of stuffing your body and taking you out on tour. You're much easier to work with Yeah, now. that's true. I was pretty obnoxious there. You know, it's not too good being dead. Those Christ jokes not going over too well these days. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he's good. He might look odd, but he's good. Yeah. Uh, you want to hear this Beavis? Oh, yeah, you do a Beavis? This is like the dumbest contest I've ever done and stuff. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> Go back to your Kinnison. All right, very good. <laughs> What is your name, Anthony? You're stupid. What's your last name? Uh, Anthony Kumia. And you're not a professional, are you? Uh, I work on the Opie Show on WBAB. Is that right? What yeah. is the Opie Show? Uh, it's Opie, 7 to Midnight, WBAB. I don't even know what that is. Opie is a guy that sort of does your show uh, oh. on WBAB at night. Oh. He takes a lot of phone calls. Oh. He's outrageous. He's a big, young guy. Big right. fan. Not, a big fan of yours. Big oh, fan. Well, no, obviously. Right, like but hey, who isn't? But meanwhile, you do a great Jackie. Oh. That's all I can say. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Don't you think it's weird that there's a radio guy named Opie? Uh, yeah. I think there's a lot of weird things going on in radio, quite frankly. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> so he didn't win. But at this point, yeah, he is a regular guest on Opie's show. But does he work on it? No. Yeah, that's a he weird... He is not getting paid, I don't believe. I'm a professional guest. <laughs> yeah. As told um, in Anthony's book... He says that the guy who was doing uh, mornings on WBAB uh, was so impressed with clips of Anthony on Opie's show that he started playing clips of Anthony on his morning show. Not really asking Opie if this was okay, just going ahead and doing it. And Anthony says that he was working on air conditioners and working in hot attics, listening to the radio in the morning, hearing his voice on the radio, and wondering what the hell was up. So Opie is getting paranoid at this point and thinks that the morning show host is going to kind of poach Anthony. And uh, his fears aren't completely unfounded. He actually does get asked if he wants to work on the morning radio show, and he decides to stick with Opie. Another story that I don't know if this is true or not, but Opie was also paranoid after Anthony's appearance on Howard Stern and thought that Stern was going to steal Anthony from him. He was convinced when I did the Howard Stern uh, show, I, I was doing the Jackie Martling thing. And uh, I came in the next day. He's like, oh, Howard's calling you, man. Howard's calling you. And that's it. You're going to go over to Howard Stern's show. And like a bitch, I swear, like a bitch. It's like, you're going to go to him. What is he have that I don't? He was so convinced. And I couldn't tell him. I'm like, Opie, I'm not fucking, I'm going, you know, we're going to do the Boston thing. We're going to do fucking whatever it is. Oh, no, Howard will call you tomorrow. That was too good. He was going to fucking call you. Did he, did he call you? He called you, right? Uh, like, I, I believe he, in his head, he, he thought he called me. So I wanted to offer some context about or around on WAAF, around ONA, before they got there. As mentioned in the book, the general manager of the station is Bruce Mittman. 
Uh, he is what they refer to as the cool boss, so to speak. He kind of let them get away with more. The program director, Dave Douglas, they would eventually na- nickname Dave Dickless uh, okay. because he would come on them a lot harder. That he sounded would... bad. But <laughs> hey, he, but he is. Hey, he would be way more strict on them about bits, not let them get away with stuff, and in the Dickless aspect, um, not back them up. When it came to, as they bring up public interest groups, oh. like women empowerment groups come up, gay groups come up against some of their bits, and Dave is more often the one to bow down to these groups and not and not stand up for ONA, while Bruce Mittman would be in the back of the room while the gay group is talking, just being like, all right, all right, all right, can we speed this up? Can we get out of here? W-A-A-F is in Worcester, Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. Not Worcester, Worcester. What about Worcestershire? No, Worcestershire. not even. But they were instructed to say Boston because that sounds like a bigger reach. You don't want to say you're broadcasting from a small town when you could say, hey, we're in the big city kind of What deal. is it like when you say you're out of New York, but you're in New Jersey? Something like that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's why Vince will say in the shadow of New York City yeah. instead of East Rutherford, New Jersey, because no one knows what the fuck that is. Right. It's right there. It's close enough. 107.3 WAAF switched to K-Love, a contemporary Christian station, in 2020 when WAAF was sold to the Educational Media Foundation for $10.75 million. Okay. It's weird because... A station that I grew up listening to, WPLJ, which again, in the 70s and 80s, was a juggernaut of like classic rock. It was like the place to go. Concerts broadcast on there and everything. In the 90s, when I would listen, uh, Scott and Todd would be in the morning show. Mm. So they're pretty big. They also are now a contemporary Christian station. So it just feels like they're just kind of... Since radio itself is kind of like a dying medium. Yeah. And I guess these Christian groups just have the money. They're sweeping through and they're taking all these formerly big name stations and turning them into Christian stations. Yeah, that's that's a really interesting phenomenon. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Nowadays, WAAF is a HD sub-channel under WWBX The Mix. When you have an HD station, the frequency is strong enough that you can broadcast multiple stations out of the same frequency. Oh. And some have sub-channels. So if you look on, like, um, 96.1, they'll have 96.12 is, like, a Fox Sports channel. And then oh. another one is, like, a Christian station. And I think the other one is Radio Disney. Oh, okay. So if you have an HD radio in your car, you can get those. But if you don't, you're just picking up the base channels. Hmm. So nowadays, WAF is a sub-channel of... What used to be WBCN, which in the time we're listening now, was WAAF's main competitor in town. WAAF switched from a formal classic rock station to a more raunchy presentation in 1991, with Greg Hill moving from the overnight position to mornings, and Liz Wilde moving to afternoon drive, but left for Chicago in 1995, leaving an opening in the station's lineup. WAAF program director Ron Valeri tuned into WBAB while visiting family in Long Island and called Hughes to offer him a job. General Manager Bruce Mittman later recounted, He almost drove off the road laughing, listening to an air check assembled by Hughes. And after a competing offer from a Dallas station, Hughes and Kumia were hired by AAF in the afternoon drive in March of 1995, officially replacing Liz Wilde. Basically, as Anthony tells it, from... His performance in the interview. Opie is always the straight-laced guy, and Anthony is the wild man. Oh. Shortly after the debut of Opie and Anthony, Valeri left the station and and was replaced by Dave Douglas. Uh, Kumia ignored directives from Douglas and dropped most of the music from their program. Despite this, Douglas cited their show as part of a high-profile air staff where every day part could easily be a well-performing morning show on another station. We're already kind of phasing out of the music. Oh, and they're playing less songs an hour. Mm. They're trying to talk more. Get away with that. Yeah. Hail Man in the Morning, which broadcast from 6.30 or 10 to 10 a.m., uh, ran for 28 years, 
coming to an end in 2019. The Greg Hill Show now airs on Sports Channel WEEI with WAAF as an HD subchannel. Ozone is the midday host from 10 to 3 and also doubles as the station's music director. And you got Rocco, who is on from 7 to midnight. The clips I have here are from the only known episodes of WAAF in existence. Okay. A lot of it falls under lost media. Nothing potentially historic happens in this episode. Right, it's just sort of... This is contextual. Yeah. Pamela Anderson. What about her? Oh, In the news again? Uh, she's in the news every day. I watch Baywatch religiously. Baywatch. Oh, every Sunday. <laughs> it's absolutely awesome. Anyways, uh, Pamela Anderson, of course, is pregnant. Now Pamela Anderson is going to be pregnant, nude, and posing for oh, Playboy. Oh, no, stop. Just stop. What's why, why the hell do we have to look at that? I did some research. Yeah. I could not find any evidence that at any point Pamela Anderson was rumored to pose naked, pregnant, in Playboy. Yeah. As their first pregnant centerfold. That wouldn't happen until 1998, and I don't know who that was. Yeah. It wasn't Pamela Anderson, though. Who cares it anyway? I want to. <sighs> Dude, a, a little thing about the Obster. Pregnant, pregnant women turn me on. What? I'm serious. That whole Demi Moore thing? When oh. she was pregnant and on the cover? A Vanity Fair. Yeah, I saw that one. No, no, no. Dude, I, total turn on. No, the beach ball belly does nothing for me. Total I'm sorry. turn on. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm being totally honest. I'm not just doing a radio thing. Totally turns me I, on. God. Pamela Anderson will pose totally nude when she is six months pregnant. Playboy will feature her as the first ever pregnant centerfold. Now, here's what I wonder, though. Did Opie make this up on his own, or did he read a rumor somewhere else? He's trying to manifest it. He's oh, oh he just it wants into, it. Speak it. Speak it into existence. The Opster wants to see it. On October 20th, ONA hosts a live remote from the Peter Pan bus terminal a week from its demolition, giving out tickets to their upcoming Halloween show to dudes doing tricks like pulling a chain through their nose and mouth and a dude deep-throating a hot dog. The later gets a much bigger, grossed-out response, because of course it does. Uh, they also claim they'll give tickets to women who flash them driving by or show their panties. I, I gotta mean, take the word on them on that one. Panties? Yeah, I'd I mean, take them already... off? Like, yeah, right? How do you do that? This is one of the hokier episodes, which is something they would shit on years later, doing the live remote out on the street, reporting live from a bus terminal a week before its demolition, like yeah. anything what are you, to get Chris, out Chris there. Chris the hobby guy? Yeah. Gonna interview everybody, ask him what the last week on the job is like. Yeah. Skipping to almost the end of 96 now, uh, this is the end of Ozone's show before Opie and Anthony come on. So Ozone's wrapping up a show, ONA come in a few minutes and early. they barging in. Yeah, they have a little... No fucking decorum. Exactly. They have a little crossover thing. You would see this happen with Frasier and, uh, what was his name? The Mad Bulldog, Dog? Bulldog, Mad Dog. Bulldog, Bulldog. yeah. Yeah, they, you know, they're on after each other. Sometimes they have a little crossover. Well, I was going to bring this up on our show, but what the hell. Uh, when I was growing up, I caddied for like 14 years. And I caddied... Oh, I caddied for the... I can't even say the name on the radio, I don't think. Say it. Uh, it's spelled K-U-N-T-Z. Oh, uh, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twelve years old, I had a caddy for the cunts. <laughs> I swear to you, I'm not lying. I am not lying. There's a true story. You can look it up on Long Island. Well, I, was, I don't know how you would look that up. <laughs> also, like, I, I'm sorry, but when you say this is a true story... Like, ten fucking times? Yeah. I start to doubt if it's a true yeah, story. Yeah, thou doth insist too much. Yeah, and I, and I yeah, I don't know how you would be able to look that up. Yeah, let me look up the cunts who golf in Long Island. How you, you would even start in yeah. 96 is beyond me. There's a couple. Guess what uh, her name is? <laughs> Anita. I swear Get to you. I know, I swear to you. You can look this up. Now, I'll believe I'll believe Dick Sweat from from Holman. Dick Sweat. And I, and I and I'll believe Dude. Harry Colon for the for the Detroit Lions. <laughs> Dude, I got I got you beat. His name was Dick, too. Get out of here. Yeah, I don't believe that either. Um yeah. I don't want to project too much, but this is just me as someone who's listened to Open Anthony for a long time presenting a theory that Opie is very worried about fitting in and being cool oh yeah and sounding cool 
So we got a room full of dudes here. Ope feels like, I got to tell this fun story. I don't know if there's any truth to it. Yeah, it's like a middle schooler. Yeah. But he's getting a reaction, so it's decent. And they were able to say cunts on the radio, so that's a win. Yeah, there you go. This is uh, the setup to a bit that happens eventually, but I don't have the episode it's on. So just the premise here is interesting, and I'll explain it in a second. It's on, Sperm Bowl 96, three days away! Oh, boy. 72 hours and counting! Oh. You're gonna lose, Anthony! Yeah, I got more sperm than you, I stop it. I don't think so. Gravity stop kills, it. A-A-F. So what's happening here is they're going to go to a fertility doctor and they're mm. both going to turn in cups of their sperm, their semen, and see what each other's sperm count is. Yeah. And are they? Yeah. Okay, wow. That is it. No more jerking around. Today, uh, bragging rights will go to one man who will be the man with the golden gonads. We'll find out soon as we kick off Sperm Bowl. 96. Yeah. Woo! To find out, to see who's, who's got more, more sperm. Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait. If you have more sperm, then you're more of a man. I'm the alpha. Yeah, that, that's really the entire context of the of the bit. I unfortunately don't have the Sperm Bowl 96 episode, so I'll never know who won. So we'll start with Anthony since he kind of went first. Oh, Anthony no. He has a sperm count of 3,210,000. Whoa, that's pretty good. He's not bad, not <laughs> Three bad. Million. All them? And Opie went, of course, second, and his sperm count would be two million six hundred and seventy-five thousand. Ah, yeah! I am sperm man. Opie does at one point say that the loser would have to, to drink. Ah, oh, drink the other one. <laughs> both samples. Yeah. Uh, would have to crash a car into a brick wall. I guess they're probably another live remote. Or they just have a sound effect queued up. Oh, God. And it doesn't actually happen. Yeah. Again. That, why would that happen? Why would they lie? I wish. I wish I knew. Are you saying that, that, that the Fool Parade wasn't real? Where Opie was selling, uh, I'm sorry, where Spuds was selling fudgy wudgy bars? Are you telling me that they weren't really building vending booths? What I'm saying is if they can possibly fake a car crashing mm. into a brick wall, they can they can fake drinking some, some oh, fucking cum. Just some glug 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 yeah, sounds? Yeah, just, uh, yeah. just some germa cat vomit sounds. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. What's stopping you? Yeah, aren't you, aren't you a man? Yeah, <laughs> prove it. Yeah, prove it. <laughs> this clip here is presented to demonstrate Opie and Anthony's uh, position in the company compared to the other DJs. Okay. Where they're at com and the where these newcomers are. So Opie and Anthony got to tell people about Ticket Blitz Thursday, a wonderful feature here at AF. In the morning, Hillman's got tickets to see George Carlin at Symphony Hall. George Carlin tickets in 1996. This is honestly probably when he's at his peak. Yeah. His shows are like... Probably some of the most widely remembered ones. Yeah. So if you listen to Hillman, you can get tickets to see George Carlin. Ozone's got tickets to see Rush. Not as big in 1996, but they were a pretty big name at one point. Oh, I see. These are to give away. Yeah. I thought it was for coverage. Like they Oh, no, I'm sorry. Talk okay. It's Ticket Blitz Thursday. Oh, I didn't know what that was. Uh, he did say it kind of fast. I should have explained. Well, he, uh, even if he had said it slow, I wouldn't have understood what it was. <laughs> Here's what you can get for listening to O&A. Kids Pop. We got tickets to see uh, Kicking Harold. Kids Pop has more content on Spotify than Kicking Harold. Who's Kicking Harold? I don't know. <laughs> I think they have an album on Spotify or a song on a compilation. I honestly don't know who they are. And Rocco turns out the tickets to see Marilyn Manson at Avalon. Ticket Blitz Thursday starts with the Hillman 6 a.m. Thursday morning with W-A-A-F. Oh, like a fucking Minecraft zombie. Yeah, yeah. He well, he is a creeper. Good morning, T. Uh, app, uh, uh. Good morning, app, app. <laughs> Feels like we were just on the radio, guy. We were. I'm getting sick of looking at your face. <laughs> Trust me, the uh, feeling is mutual. All right. Are they calling each other cock block? <laughs> so it's op op is for Opie and ack ack is for Anthony. Kumia. Yeah. Not like a Mars Attacks reference. I don't think that's come out yet. It is that, that, no, that'd be cool. If that's it was, what I was but thinking. It's not because it's not out yet. I don't think it is. I think that came out in '98. Probably. 
Um, so this happens a lot, and what you heard in this clip specifically is that they're not even saying the names eventually. They're yeah. just making noises. Um, which I can't tell if they genuinely think it's funny, yeah. or if they're doing it as a, this is so corny. It did come out in 96. December 96. Maybe. Mm. Think it no, it's out. not out yet. Okay. We're only in October, so no. No. Nope. That falls flat, unfortunately. What I have written down here is called very original bit. And I want to see at what point it dawns on you why I called it that. Okay. Hi, I'd like to know if you've given away all the tickets for Corn or if it's possible to get any tickets. I'm not sure. I might have one pair of tickets uh, to see Corn tonight. What would you do for them? Just about anything. Like? Anything. What would you do? Mm. I don't know. Just give me something to do. How old are you? 19. 19. Perfect age. Perfect mm. age. <laughs> are you near your speaker? Yeah, I am. All right. Can you put your speaker on the floor? So Okay, so when you... do private parts come out? <laughs> Not yet. It comes what, out in 97. Was, was that scene based on a real thing? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know when Howard did the speaker bit. Yeah. It had to have been before this. I can look it up. I want to look it up. Okay, yeah. Find out when Howard first did the sit on the speaker bit, and I'll present it for the record that as soon as Opie said speaker, uh, Neb rolled their eyes. So it was instantaneous new yeah. what <laughs> what the deal was. Because that is literally the only part of Private Parts that I remember. And I don't even fully remember it. I just remember like the cheesy scene of her like dry humping a speaker. This is on... 86. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's a whole 10 years. Uh, before this. 85. At least 86. Cause 85 is coming up too, though. Okay. You could say plausible deniability, but both Opie and Anthony were fans of Howard. Like, Howard Stern, he's not some creative genius, in my opinion. He would have you believe otherwise, but sure, go off. But, like, whoever thought of the speaker bit, that's a really creative bit. Sure. Cool. Yeah, and the way that they frame, the, the way that they, like, do the bit, o, o and A do their bit, it's, like, stilted. Fingers crossed you've never heard the Howard bit and you don't say it. Or if this is just a whole setup and not real anyway, then it doesn't really matter. Oh, I think I, I'd probably do anything. I'd probably do anything to see corn. What if... Who do they hire to do these? That's what I'm saying. And everybody just has a set of stand-up speakers in their house. Yeah, you're not. Oh, I'm just listening like in the car. Else. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. I guess sho shove your shove your butt against the yeah, just side sit. of the car. I, yeah, how's that gonna work? I don't know. How lucky that they just happened to have someone call up that had a set of stand up speakers. But let's say this: arguably, if you can afford a set of stand up speakers in the '90s for a good sound system, you can afford corn tickets in '96. Yeah, I don't think corn's blown up that much. That the tickets, tickets would be unreal. Yeah, Unrealistic that expensive yet. Back, back then either. No, absolutely not. Um, so I'm not going to play the rest of this because it goes on for a really long time and you Does already know go, what it is. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I'll skip to the end. <laughs> How was that for you? It was excellent. Wow. That was awesome. Oh, I'm out of breath. That feel good? Yeah. Okay. Nice. I don't have any corn tickets. I'm sorry. What? That is the least arousing sound I've ever heard. Well, what's funny is when, Ho when Howard does it in the movie, he's doing like... Yeah, noises. to get the bass. Because that would, yeah. Yeah. They're just going, uh... Yeah, And right? there's no bass to that. So you're not even doing the bit right. No bitches. No bitches! Yeah. Well, oh. that's that, that should be a tagline for the show. Oh. Because they would have you believe that they are not in serious relationships because they have to come off as cool young guys, not tied down to Are they to women. both married? Anthony is married. Opie is in a relationship at this point. I don't know for how long, but they are never brought up on the WAAF show. However, 
when they release an album, uh, an Opie and Anthony CD, Demented World. Wait, they have music? Uh, it's mostly bits and oh. skits and prank phone calls. It's like an MC Chris album. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> it's it's like 90% skits uh, okay. with a couple Rot Gut songs thrown out. They do a really corny uh, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer parody because that's super original for 97. Uh, and in the special thanks, I took note of this, uh, Anthony does thank his girlfriend Sandy in like Sandy the fifth line of special thanks after like every member of his family. Anthony thanks his gr- his uh, wife Jennifer. First thanks, straight off the bat. So oh, wait, who who's? I think you said Anthony thanks Sandy. You mean Opie? Opie thanks Opie Sandy. thanks Sandy. My okay. bad. Uh, and Opie's entire page of special thanks is a story about uh, how grateful he is to be in radio and his longstanding tradition and f- meeting up with Anthony and being so grateful. That he's found such a funny guy to do a radio show with, and how the sky's the limit. Anthony's page is a full page about a story about a time in high school where he pissed off a guy in his school who had eventually become an NFL quarterback, but he was a bully in Anthony's high school, and they got in a fight, and Anthony threw a punch and broke his fucking arm trying to punch the kid because he was he threw such a shitty punch. That takes up an entire page. While Opie's is about my, my career in radio. All of this really does contextualize how different these two are. So when was Anthony's first memoir? Uh, well, his, uh, his permanently suspended book uh, came out... Permanently suspended? Because he was permanently suspended from Twitter. Okay, I thought, I thought <sighs> it was like, oh, I'm like 14... And I got permanently suspended. Yeah, no. It's... All these principals canceling me. Oh. Deplatforming me from school. I'm fired from my radio job. I'm kicked off Twitter. I'm arrested f- under um, alleged domestic violence charges. Everyone's coming to get me. They seem very, quote unquote, authentically juvenile. He's a blue collar guy. He's been installing air conditioners. And now he's on the radio. He's just Mr. Happy to be there. He's the American dream. <laughs> he is the American dream. I hung up and told Jennifer, we're going to Massachusetts. I got the gig and I'm making $27,500. She said, what? Call him back and tell him you need to make at least what you were making now. To ask for a thousand extra dollars? Yeah. But I could see how someone with no radio experience probably yeah, doesn't He doesn't like want to look any. a gift horse in the mouth with this one. Yeah. He's like, oh, no. I did a make-believe call and pretended to negotiate. And I told Jennifer he agreed to give me a thousand bucks more to equal my current yearly salary. Uh, I knew she wasn't going to look at my checks and understand taxes and everything else. Anyway, who gave a shit at this point? I was like, shut the fuck up. I'm going to be doing radio. So he loves his wife and respects his wife and he never lies to his wife. I was contemplating when I should bring up the truth about Anthony and his wife. If I should just let it come up naturally on the radio when Anthony talks about it, or if I should just tell you about it now. But it... I think I should tell you about it now. Because I'm, I'm interested now. I want to leave a whole bunch of his childhood stories for him to tell on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll, I'll leave it at this. Anthony's childhood is fucked up. Uh-huh. Um, and he wanted to be taken seriously. He didn't want to be known as Rose's son. His mom, like Rose or whatever her name was. <laughs> He's like, I didn't want to be known as Rose kid. I wanted to be my own man. Mm-hmm. So very quickly... Even though he was extremely unhappy in his relationship with his current girlfriend, him and Jennifer got married. And according to his book, and telling the story on the radio, they got married, they went home, his wife passed out drunk, Anthony laid in his bed and cried and asked himself, why the fuck did I do this? And instantly regretted it. They're going to be married for a few Yeah, years. I was going to say, how long were they married for? Uh, too long. Jesus. So... There's this clip that goes on, and it's it's not really worth playing the whole thing, but there's somebody from this station <clears throat> that's sent out at a mall, and he has a jar of peanut butter, and he finds these girls who I don't know how old they are. They sound very young, though. They don't know how old they are. And they have them put a, a spoonful of peanut butter in their mouth, 
and repeat sexual phrases with a mouthful of peanut butter. That's an extremely unique fetish. It's supposed to sound like they have a dick in their mouth, but it doesn't. It just sounds like they have peanut butter in their mouth, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll play some of this. Are we going to try it later in the episode? Should we Should we get some peanut butter and try and try that? Here's the tease, folks. Oh, no. We weren't going to say it up front. That would have been smart. But yeah, uh, just to give you an example. Oh, <laughs> I love when girls have that full mouth sound. Mm -hmm. I got peanut butter in my mouth now. Oh, you certainly do. <laughs> Can you say, repeat something? Sure. Okay, say, oh, Anthony, you're so big. Oh, Anthony, you're so big. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, repeat after me. Okay. Oh, Opie, I don't think I could take any more red. Oh, Anthony. I don't think I can say anything more, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they were also... Oh, oh fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll do it. I forgot. They were asked to also sing uh, Christmas carols. It's, uh, it's December 12th. All right, say, ouch, I think I bruised my tonsils. <laughs> I think I bruised my tonsils. <laughs> uh, repeat after me. Mm -hmm. Is that all you got for me? <laughs> Is that all you got for me? <laughs> <laughs> all right, how about this? I never spit. I never spit. <laughs> oh, so it's not supposed to be like you've got you've got a full mouth of... of of ejaculate. Oh, okay. It's not like you're still sucking on, oh. on a phallus. Oh. That makes a bit more sense. I guess. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. hmm. That's very specific. I, I, it just sort of sounds like I'll never spit. I'm not gonna fucking swallow it because there's, well, uh, like, there's yeah. something, it's too thick. It's thick like peanut butter. Like, what's yeah. wrong with you? Yeah, what the, what the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> what is this? Why did you send a man to put a spoonful of peanut butter in my mouth? Yeah, Let's why, fucking break down the kayfabe here. Anthony, why do you come peanut butter? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's time for the get your ass off the couch and go do something report. Here's my buddy, Jack Doc. Thank you, Bap Bap. And you know the Get Your Ass Off the Couch Report brought to you by the Worcester Centrum Center. Nice. UMass Basketball versus Maryland at the Centrum uh, February 15th on sale this Saturday at 10 a.m. in person at the Centrum box office or called Tiki Master. Okay? <laughs> no, just because this guy sucks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to make it work, though, right? Tiki Master? Do bastard. Do bastard. Because <laughs> you said master. <laughs> do, do bastard. Do bastard. I was going to say do better. Well, let's see if he does better. He won't. He has a chance. No. Stallone, daylight in the movies. <laughs> Sleeper. Good night, Bruce. Good night, Bruce. It's so our, our big boss, Bruce Mittman, checking in. I guess their manager was heading home. And he just walked past the studio or stuck his head in the door and waved to him. No, he's, he, he walked past the studio and just waved him off like, ah, you suck. <laughs> he walked past with his hat over his face. Yeah, he's like, That's oh, to fuck. not be noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to have to look at him doing the get a, get your ass off the couch report and do something or whatever the fuck. The name is long as hell. Y yeah. And they got sponsors. Can you imagine someone in the sales department? Hey, um, I'm, I'm so and so from WAF. Uh, would you be interested in sponsoring get off your ass and do something report? Oh yeah, I've heard about that. It's classic. I love it. It's so funny. <laughs> I'll only pay for it if Anthony says Tiki Master. Do you sell your ticket through t Ticketmaster? No. No, Tiki Master. Yeah, no, we only use Tiki Master. So, is this going to be read on the Rocco show or the Op, Op, and Act, Act show? Yeah, the the wannabe um, uh, Coneheads fucking... Oh! Yeah, I realized that could be another... They are from France. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah! Okay. That's one thing I remember about the Coneheads. That's all you remember about the cone heads? I uh, remember they ate cats, I think. You don't you, you don't remember they have cones for heads? Well, yeah, of course. Okay. I'm saying bit specific things. Okay. And didn't the daughter... Well, I don't know. Never Wait, mind. Wait, no, I go on. I, wasn't there a thing like the daughter looked different? Or did they all just have cone heads? No, she had a cone head. Oh, she did? <laughs> they were the cone heads. Oh, uh, so it wasn't like a monsters thing where Marilyn looked like an average person while everyone else looked like monsters. She, her cone, her, her head cone was slightly smaller. Yeah, okay. It's probably half the half the size of her parents. A demi-cone. No, they, why would they say that? <laughs> no. Uh, you know what's on TV tonight? Uh, 
Kathy Lee, just in time for Christmas. Ah! <laughs> I'm going gonna, gonna to poke myself in the eye. That's what I want really to do, Matt. Ah! Ah! You know, how about you just don't watch it? Oh, just don't watch. I'm going to poke my eyes out. Just don't watch it. Yeah. Just. Why are you even talking about it? Yeah. Like. Get off your ass and do something report. Here's something you can get off your ass and do. Watch oh, TV. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. All right, brother man. Hey, let's rock on with Ozzy. Yes, let's do that. Hey, yeah. So what's the ratio between minutes of music and minutes mm. of them talking, hmm. do you think? The ratio is three to one music. Okay. And that sounds fine by me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, God, they do not know how to fill air. No, they really don't. Um, but you can tell there at the end, uh, Anthony hates the bit so much that he's just going to ramble through the name of it. And it's a weird mixture of Anthony is happy to be there guy, wants to do anything but to totally get paid. But totally doesn't respect the industry at all. No, yeah. doesn't give a fuck. And this is what's really interesting to me. Fast forwarding to present day, real quick. Opie says that he could still be doing radio like he was if he had a job. But... <laughs> I he, could still have a job if I had a job. Yeah, but he doesn't seem to be trying to. Yeah. Anthony says in response that if Opie wanted to spin records like he did back in the day, he could. Which is interesting, too, because if you ask me, after the reputation they made for themselves, they're kind of damaged goods. Yeah. Like, I don't think Opie could sell himself as... Opie from the Midnight Attitude or Spuds Buckley back in the day playing music. Yeah. Because everyone now knows of all the things he did in the ONA show in not a music format. Yeah. He's not known as a radio DJ. He's a shock jock. And he would take a pay cut, I'm sure. Yeah. Like a huge one. So why would you hire a shock jock to spin records? Yeah, you're in 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 the radio sense, you're overqualified. Yeah. Like, and you're going to want to shit the fucking shit talking. (laughs) Yeah. So either you host a podcast, which you did for a few years, but got canceled in 2019, or you just don't do anything, I guess. Yeah. But to say that what you're doing is better than anything on mainstream radio or whatever while you're live streaming is kind of a joke. But I also think it's kind of shitty of Anthony to say or imply that if Opie wanted to, he could... Because I don't think he could, honestly. Yeah. Not at this point in his career. But it made me think about... Like, I sent you that video of uh, Kid Kelly uh, accepting his award, uh, being inducted into into the 2018 uh, Radio Hall of Fame or whatever. Yeah. He's made a huge lasting career from the 90s, now working at Sirius, kind of more of a behind-the-scenes guy, but he also kind of does a shift. If you keep your head down low enough, like I mentioned earlier, Greg Hill, the Hill Man, who's been, who's doing radio in the morning at WAAF, when O and A were here in ninety five. Right. Was doing radio on the station until twenty nineteen. Would Opie have become as much of the shock jock that he did if Anthony hadn't gotten involved? No. Yeah, that's no. true. Okay. Cause it feels like he would have just been like pretty, you know, inoffensive. He'll play some raunchy parody songs on his show. He'll maybe do a wacky foam prank here and there. But nothing that's going to get himself fired. Yeah, and nothing that, like, people are going to be like, whoa. It'll get people listening and be like, oh, this is something else. Yeah. But, yeah, it's It's not not shocking. Yeah, like, they're not going to call for you to be fired or anything like that. If Opie never met Anthony, I imagine Opie would probably still be in radio. Yeah. But he would never be as successful. Yeah. He never would have made as much money. But I think he would have been able to, to secure... A uh, steady, consistent job. Yeah, and like you said, like sort of keeping his head down compared to like shock jocks are like, oh, fuck, keeping our head down. Let's keep our dicks up. <laughs> you let's, know? let's keep our dicks out. <laughs> yeah, and then wave you know, our dicks at everybody. Everybody else that's like in it for the love of the radio is just sort of like, I mean, you know, okay, yeah, I'll compromise. You know, I'll compromise with what what the man- station manager wants us to be doing. And oh, okay, you really don't like us doing that because it's bad for the station. Okay, you know, yeah, well, oh, okay. The main thing with shock jock radio is the complaint that people make about uh, hardcore wrestling. Where do you go from here? What do you do next? Uh, like once you've broken your neck a few times in shock jock radio, <laughs> it's like yeah, you got thrown thrown through a table. 
Then what's next? Yeah. Two flaming tables? Yeah, right. Flaming tables on thumbtacks? Like, you keep yeah. having to elevate yourself. Yeah. So with shock jocks, it's like, yeah, you're pushing the envelope, but you keep having to push it. Yeah. And after a while, you can only go so far. Yeah, like, how big is the legally. desk? Like, how, how big is this <laughs> desk that this envelope is on? It's gonna fall off. It's gonna fall off eventually, yeah. yeah. So that's the inherent risk, I think. But when you're doing safe like you said, unthreatening, not offensive yeah. radio. The worst thing you have to worry about is low ratings. Yeah, like uh, Bob and Tom, Bob and Sherry. Oh my Tom, God! Yeah. Tom and Jerry. You know, they've been, they've been doing radio for decades. <laughs> yeah. If if a station is maybe low in the ratings, you might get kicked off the station. If you encounter management change, and a new program director or general manager comes in, yeah, and they come from a station that might have a show of their own. There are plenty of people who have made, maybe not so much anymore, because radio itself as a, you know, as a format and as a genre has changed so much yeah. as an industry. But there were people who were uh, able to be DJs for their whole life, from like a teenager to like practically the time they die, because if you've been in it so long, you're now a legacy staple name. Yeah. And you could just ride that. Yeah, if you've been doing it for so long, then everyone just kind of looks at you and you really can't do anything wrong. Yeah. The, your name itself is a draw. Unless you turn into a shock jock. <laughs> yeah, which I guess is easier than I guess you would think it would be. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess we'll find out as we go along just like how slippery this slope becomes. But it seems already that, not to say that Opie's a good guy, because I, I don't know enough about him yet, but he definitely seems to have been corrupted already within this story. That's something I think we'll come across. Yeah. And I think that'll be one of the more interesting things is... When you see how Opie now feels like he has to keep up with Anthony. Yeah. Because... He's a, it's like he's been influenced by the bad kid in the neighborhood. Yeah. Because when o and show up for their interview for the WAAF job, it's the combination of Opie, who is the guy who knows the structure and how to run a radio show, and Anthony, the wild card... This Joe Schmo. Who is the more entertaining of the two... They both bring something to the table that makes the show run. Okay, terrific. The more shocking you are, arguably, the more niche you become. Yes, absolutely, so, yeah, because you start ostracizing yeah. and... You're like, oh, offend that person? Kick them out, you know? Yeah, and you just start turning away groups yeah. of people who could be potential listeners otherwise. Yeah, and I feel like there's been some research lately on um, marketing that's that's showing that niche marketing is not as profitable as it used to be mm. um and i feel like you can see that with a lot of the streamers that are really big on twitch and stuff these days yeah. where it's just like oh and they're just sort of general audience they you know they talk about relevant stuff but they don't have extremely polarizing views that they talk about in the context of what initially influenced me to start this podcast in the first place with knowledge fight and alex jones is the cultivation of a fan base yeah and that's something that i really want to take a look at in this podcast also pay attention to because right now there aren't a whole lot of callers calling in and you don't really get an idea of what their audience is um until we start looking at the visual aspect which might need to be in the next episode so going into 1997 is the beginning of whip them out wednesday campaign oh that was that early that early wow, and i'm surprised and when ONA's album Demented World is released. And this is what, once it's released nationwide, uh, gives ONA a much wider potential audience. Also, there is a midnight show that aired locally where uh, Opie and Anthony do bits and skits and some impressions. Since there's not too much there, I think in the next episode, we also might cover the end of their time at WAAF and what brought that on. Okay. So until next time for ONA Detox, this is Neb and Muse punching out.